Okay. So uh, I'm Terry Parker. I work at Google as a software engineer. And uh, I'm going to talk today about handling large files in Git using some new uh, protocol features. Um, I manage the Git core team that works on the uh, open source project upstream and am tech lead manager of the server team that manages a large hosting service that uh, Yvonne and Min uh, talked about the variety of clients we support there. So the agenda today is to uh, define terms. What are we talking about with large files? Uh, why do I consider native support for, for large files to be important? And I'm going to talk about a couple new features in Git that are emerging. Well, the first one, partial clones, are, is an emerging thing, just introduced in uh, Git 2.17 or 18. This is why I need my speaker notes. But introduced in April of last year. And um, the second one is a feature that's a work in progress. It isn't out there anywhere yet. It's just being proposed on the uh, Git open source project, which is using content distribution networks for cloning. So uh, what do we mean by large file? Uh, how are we going to define this? Well, um, it can be by extension type. Things named .bin are generally not text files. And so you might say every .bin file is large, whether it has a byte count that's large or not. Uh, you may have specific uh, VM image extensions or Android APK files. Um, or you can define it by size. Uh, but do you want to set that threshold at 100K bytes, a megabyte? Um, I think it's important to be uh, flexible here. It's, it's what's large to you is just what's ever causing problems for, for your developers who are working with Git. So what do I mean by native support? I mean that actually the core internals of Git know what you're dealing with um, and are able to, to uh, help you adapt. Um, so clients can make the trade-offs they need, and servers can make the trade-offs that they need. So am I talking about Git LFS? I'm not talking about Git LFS. I don't consider LFS to be a native understanding of Git. LFS is using some pre-existing hooks called smudge and clean filters that basically uh, are pre and post hooks. So when you're about to push a large object, Git LFS substitutes a URL that points to that object in the place of the object. Um, and the problem with that is that you have to have everything pre-configured for that to work correctly. So there's a scenario where you've configured LFS for all of your .bin files. Uh, brilliant engineer comes along and you know, updates the bin format in a way that's really great. And it's so important that it should be named a bin2. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, these files are getting checked in, and they're bypassing LFS. Uh, since I maintain a server team, something that's really important to me is being able to serve lots of customers effectively. And uh, if we have people doing large clones uh, and they may be coming across you know, slow or moderate speed connections, if you're cloning 10 gigabytes, you're not going to get that done very quickly. And you're tying up a thread on the server and using lots of bandwidth to do that. So uh, partial clones are, uh, as I said, an emerging feature uh, that were introduced in 2.17 or 18 in April. Uh, and we've been improving support through time. So it's best to use uh, 2.20 of Git if you want to test this out. But the way to think about it is it allows the client to say, hey, I want this clone of this repository, but I want to filter out certain objects. And I will come back to you if I need them later. So on-demand downloading by the client. So here are some example commands you can look at and, and think about what they'll do, and we'll walk through some of them. So my, my sample repository in here has two files that are always being updated at the same time in every commit. So we have, have a single master branch with uh, a long chain of history with n plus 2 commits. Um, and if you're not familiar with the Git object hierarchy, uh, commits have parents, and so you see that by the directed arrow there. Uh, n prime prime is uh, the its, its parent is n prime, going back to n. And uh, a commit also points to a tree object, and a tree object can point to other tree objects to represent subdirectories, or to actual uh, file contents, which are called blobs. So in this case, we have one uh, m binary that's a, you know, a megabyte size binary, and a help text that's describing the updates that were made to it each time. 
So uh, in this command line, we're cloning with this filter blob limit equals one megabyte. And if you take a look, um, we have a couple gray, uh, filter, gray ovals now, and those are the things that are not being downloaded by this command. Now, you may notice that the uh, 1M bin uh, prime prime is, is being downloaded, and that's because a clone is actually uh, two operations. Uh, the first operation is a fetch. It fetches all the content into the .git directory in your local client. And the second operation is checking out a branch. So by default, it's going to check out whatever branch head points to, which by, by default is master. So in this case, the initial fetch into the .git directory did not fetch that uh, 1m.bin prime prime file. Uh, it was the checkout where it said, hey, this is something that I actually need to populate in the work tree that did that as a second transaction. Here's a second command, git clone with dash dash no checkout. The no checkout stops that second phase. So it's just going to fetch things into the .git directory. And in this case, we said filter blob none. So we're downloading all the commits, all the trees, but none of the file contents. And here's a further um, checkout with a, a newer feature that is probably made available only in uh, 2.20, which is the filter uh, tree equals zero. And that's uh, saying not to check out any of the trees. So it's only checking out the commits. Now, I'm, I'm just talking about large objects here. Why are we concerned about trees? It ends up that this uh, filtering mechanism can solve lots of use cases in Git. And uh, my team at Google has been cooperating with Microsoft um, on this because they they have, I believe, the largest Git repository out there. The entire Windows code base and Office code base they put into a mono repo that's a Git repo. And uh, you can imagine that that is very, very large. And you can imagine most developers don't need to check out all that history. They're only involved in one, you know, if you're working on Office, you don't need the Windows, you know, all the Windows stuff. So um, this is a facility to allow uh, the further development of these large mono repos and allow developers to be efficient. So the second feature I want to talk about is, and this is, um, this is just a work in progress. The uh, proposal has been made on the Git upstream list, and um, uh, it's pretty receptive. We think this is going to happen, but um, let's talk about why using a content distribution network is, is important. Um, Content distribution networks are, are really good at handling high peak volume loads. I actually wanted to get that viral surprised kitty video, but I'm a, a mere software engineer who doesn't understand copyright, and I didn't know whether I could actually use that uh, and get it attributed, so we just get a cute puppy instead. Um, but uh, they are very good at scaling up and load balancing, and also do a good job of moving the content close to where the user is requesting the data. So there are lots of good properties. Uh, but really, for me, what's great about content distribution networks is that um, uh, networks actually live in physical space and time and are subject to uh, failure, power failures in a router, those types of things. Not every packet that gets sent out on, out on the internet reaches its destination. And the current Git protocol is kind of crafting a custom, every, when you do a clone, is crafting a custom pack file with all the latest commits right up until you know, the second before you requested that. And if you get 99% of the way through a 10 gigabyte transfer and then you have some kind of failure, you have to start from scratch. It's not resumable at all. And content distribution networks have the nice property where they're, they're HTTP get commands. And if you fail 9 gigabytes out of a 10 gigabyte um, transfer, you can just resume and pick up that last gigabyte. And you can also choose to get uh, ranges within there, and you can parallelize that and issue 10 parallel 1 gigabyte requests. So uh, for clients, there's some really nice properties of making uh, Git more reliable for these large clones. Um, and uh, do we think this will work? Well, actually, uh, Android, uh, Android's release model is to do lots of developments of new APIs and stuff and kind of 
announce that, and they have an internal copy of the code base, and then they um, merge that with the external copy of the code base once a year, and the whole world comes and tries to download that. And our servers right now would not be able to handle that load without using this kind of um, strategy. And uh, there's a tool in the Android uh, environment that some other um, uh, ecosystems use as well called the repo tool that does exactly this. It will fetch uh, a, a static copy from a few days ago of the repository, uh, put that in the .git directory, and then do an incremental fetch on top of that. So you know, my message, my takeaway message is that um, we, uh, the Git project is trying to deal with these things. You know, initially, Git was intended for source code. People are putting a lot of other different types of assets in there. And Git hasn't always adapted well. Uh, but uh, the Git community is cooperating together to, um, to make sure these things work. So you can uh, look for these features in a release near you. Uh, there are um, lots of companies have blog posts. GitHub does. Uh, Google has the open source blog. And uh, Microsoft is also doing a lot of great work to help scale Git up, and they, they blog about that. Uh, and there are release notes that are put out from within the, the Git project itself. So look for all these features uh, coming to a Git release near you. So thank you.